Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Welcome to the video, guys. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I'm taking the little man, taking the little man to Disney World. It's first time on a plane, uh, first time to Disney World, and it's uh, it's going to be a blast. I can't wait. So I will be away for a couple days, uh, not too long. He's only four years old, you know, uh, but I'll have content for you guys, so don't worry about that. A lot of good content. What I want to do is spotlight one deck that is seeing a tremendous amount of success for each one of these three champions in the game. Starting today, with Skeleton King, the champion that I was the least kind of keen on, but Samuel, today's guest, very good player. He loves the combination specifically of the Witch and the Skeleton King with the Skarmy in there as well. Basically, the idea here is to get as many dead Larrys, as many dead Skeletons on the board as humanly possible, and then use that to charge up the Skeleton King. I actually do have some uh, words straight from the pro of advice for you guys. Basically, you can pause and read it if you want to, but again, using the combination of the, the Skeleton King King with the witch having the skeleton king in front of the witch and using those dead Larrys to charge up his ability is a dynamic uh, combination also with the Skarmy as we just discussed and he goes on to say here that uh, also using it defensively the special ability being careful to when you use it you can use it on defense against uh, units like the P.E.K.K.A. or you can use it on offense obviously when fully charged up as well let's go ahead and watch this 12 win uh, replay here to start things off so this was the 12 win and and you guys are gonna see the Skeleton King in action. Man, I'm kinda surprised. I'm not I'm not that surprised. I'm not that surprised that stupid YouTubers, uh, you know, with early access to the dev build, we couldn't find a good use case for the Skeleton King. But it seems like he's not that weak after all, right? So I was r r r wrong. Raw eggs safe. Uh, yet again here, guys. Are you used to it by now after, after what, eight years on YouTube? Are you used to me being wrong a lot? Uh, it certainly was the case here with Skeleton King. He's not trash. So here we go. This is the combo we're talking about right now. I'm not sure if he executes it on the very first push, but you can see we're already starting to charge up, and we go in with the graveyard as well. So we have the Skeleton King Witch combination. This is very difficult to stop. He goes in with that log. He does use the Skeleton King ability. That's a lot of Larry's, guys. And that was, I don't know what the opponent could really have done to defend much better on that push. So really good use case. We're seeing exactly what we're talking about in that combo, the Witch and the Skeleton King, on the very first push of the very first match in today's video. You'll notice the opponent is going with the Golden Knight. All three of these champions seem to be pretty powerful. I'm seeing a ton of grand challenges being won more so than ever, and we're seeing an, just an absolute dramatic influx of new players and returning players into the game. You can take a look at Google Trends, take a look at any of the, uh, the websites out there that share download metrics or you can just look at the amount of people playing Grand Challenges, right? We used to have maybe, I don't know, about 20 wins a day or so of Grand Challenge wins. Now we're at like 200 wins a day. It's insane. So there's definitely a large influx, as I mentioned, of new players. Really love to see it, man. I love to see that. You know, it's, uh, it's cool to see new players come into the game after this uh, long of a time. So here comes the balloon, it does make contact. The witch veers off track, goes to the opposite lane. So just like that, we are in a deficit here, but there's over a minute left in this contest. Five seconds remaining until we get to double extra time. We go in with that graveyard push using the Skeleton King. Skeleton King does use that ability activation, summons a bunch of Larrys, and the Larrys are able to take down that right hand tower. So very well played indeed. Man, I'm feeling good today, guys. I'm feeling really Really good. We had a massive nor'easter here in New England. My power was knocked out for two days, internet out for almost three days. You don't know how much you rely on the internet until you don't have it, especially if you work from home. Here it comes, a P.E.K.K.A., a Golden Knight, and an E-Wiz against a Witch, an Inferno Dragon, and a Skeleton King. The Skeleton King, Inferno Dragon, Witch combo does win that one. Notice that we're not always using our special ability. That does cost two Elixir with a Skeleton King as compared to the Golden Knight. One Elixir and the Archer Queen, one Elixir. So keep that in mind. Had to be very careful not to overuse your ability. We are just seven, six seconds away from Sudden Death. Overtime is going to be an interesting one. Here we go. Building a push with the Skeleton King behind his King Tower is Samuel. The same combo we talked about. The Witch and the Skeleton King. We all also drop that Skarmy. Look at his little, his meter is full. He's already fully charged up. Probably gonna go ahead and, uh, oh, we didn't use the ability there. We were focusing instead on defending and distracting with the Dark Prince. So here it comes, two witches now on the board. 
He has E-Wiz, he has Log, you can kind of see the opponent trying to think to himself, what the heck am I going to do here? He goes with the Golden Knight, he's going to use that extra ability, it looks like, no, he's not even going to use the ability. Yeah, good luck with the Dark Prince and a couple Witches coming down the lane. Fireball comes down against the E-Wiz, we have two Witches healthy on the tower, takes it all the way down to... Oh, 700 or so HP. Make it 629 HP. Man, what a big push that was. The opponent's certainly not benefiting from having no big spell in their deck. He has Log, he has Snowball. He has, you know, a pretty good defensive deck, but just no big spell. And that's going to cost him here. He does try to attack in the pocket in a pretty lucrative connection there. 858 remaining. But then we respond in kind. We go immediately with the Skeleton King. We immediately activate that ability. Fire Fireball comes down along with the arrows, and that's going to be good game. So two really good players going to head-to-head -to -head for that 12-win Grand Challenge victory. That actually leads me to, to, to think that Grand Challenges might be a little bit easier right now. If we have 10 times the amount of players playing in them, now might be the time if you're taking a break from victory challenges, classic challenges, grand challenges. Now might be the time, guys, to go ahead and uh, enter in. See if you can get maybe your first grand challenge or classic challenge victory. I know me awkwardly. I've never won a classic challenge, however I have won a bunch of grand challenges. So I need to get my classic challenge ba uh, badge, excuse me, so I will go ahead and try to make that happen soon. Archer Queen, there she is, the most powerful champion, maybe the most powerful, uh, you know, card in the game right now. Her veil, her special ability, it's so strong, man. You can have some really crazy dynamics. I know Zeraldo was uh, tweeting at me today, or yesterday, the other day, showing me how you can put her in front of a battle ram. You can use her as a tank at the bridge in bridge spam decks, right? And what ends up happening is you cloak her immediately, the tower will get off of her, retarget onto whoever's behind her, and it can be very, very difficult to stop a push like that. Uh, I'll show you that in my Archer Queen Spotlight video, the, the dynamic there that I'm trying to talk about. So we're going against Fancy Man of Corn. Kind of like the name, not gonna lie. Fancy Man of Corn. Uh, we're gonna go in with this guy, does have a spell. He's playing the Archer Queen Expo deck. I'm not sure the cost on this one, but we go in with the Skeleton King. I have to ask you guys too, I might post this as a community tab poll actually. Uh, maybe, maybe, I'll, it's, maybe it will already be live by the time that you watch this video. But do you guys think they should add more champions? Is three enough? Do you think there'll eventually be eight champions, 10 champions, 12 champions? I. I don't know, this might be a popular or unpopular opinion, but the more the merrier for me, man. I think that they're kind of interesting. As I said in the Rich Slayton collab video yesterday, I don't think, or two days ago, I don't think they're necessarily a massive game changer in the way of, you know, maybe tower abilities or like more dynamic changes. Like if every card had a gadget type ability, like in Brawl Stars, uh, where they're able to do something mid-match for Elixir. Now that would be crazy. Uh, but with that said, I like it. I like the update. I like the champions. I like that everybody can use them at tournament level standard inside global tournaments and grand challenges and classic challenges. All right, so here we go, guys. A split lane push. We have a witch and a DP in the right lane. We have a uh, or excuse me, uh, a, a skeleton king in a DP in the right-hand lane. And then we have a witch going down, marching in the left-hand lane, making contact with that princess tower, doing a significant amount of damage. 1785, another expo reloaded for the fancy man of corn himself. Here comes the Inferno Dragon on that expo uh, for Samuel, doing a pretty good job there, distracting with the Larrys as well. Neither player has scored a ton of damage, just that witch damage, really. Here it comes, Inferno Dragon's gonna be taken care of, gonna be toast, thanks to that archer queen and here we go it's again we might see that combo we're talking about are we gonna see him go down right now okay it does so he does use that skeleton king in the right hand lane skeleton king doesn't have a ton of hp though as you can see there so gotta be careful uh, but, you know, otherwise, still still in a good position here inside the match. We do score a Dark Prince charge against the strong side tower, which is going to fall to now the weak side tower in the right-hand lane. Inferno Dragon was Johnny on the spot there. Fireball comes down against the Inferno Dragon. Doesn't really matter that much. The Larry is, again, doing a good job of distracting there while the Inferno Dragon bleeds away at the Expo. Again, a princess. The OP uh, Archer Queen. Why did I call her a princess, man? Archer Queen. The OP Archer Queen does make her way onto the arena again. 
again here. Oh, with about uh, eh, 120 seconds or so remaining here in the match. We'll see which way it goes. Here we go again. Log comes down. Skeleton King is disposed of by the Expo. We have a healthy, kind of healthy witch making her way onto the other side of the arena. Knight comes down. She does lock onto the tower there. That's going to be three more lucrative hits onto that right princess hand, uh, princess tower. Here we go. It's a knight. It's a an ability activated from the Archer Queen. Ability activated from the Archer Queen. I feel like I'm doing play-by-play -play commentary for Clash of Clans circa 20... 15 here on the channel. All right, here we go. It's going to be an Archer Queen down. Let's see the Queen Walk, man. Battle Healer, Archer Queen, Queen Walk. Uh, some Golalo action going on over here. Anybody have any clue what I'm talking about? Anyway, we're in Triple Elixir time. Another very, very strong push there. After this match, I'm going to give the deck a try, then we'll end with another replay against a... Uh, against another deck. We'll try to find something a little bit different to go against at the end. But again, Archer Queen is cleaning up. You saw that last lucrative push. All it takes, similar to any graveyard deck, all it takes is one push to win a game with the Skeleton King. You just need that right combination. You need the right deck around him, the supporting cast, right? So here comes a Fireball. Disposes of the Inferno Dragon. 20 seconds remaining. We go ahead and end things right there with a Fireball. Okay, I'm going to try this deck out on Ladder. Going against a level 13 Sorry for bullying you, man. All my cards are still level 13. Not all. I think I have like one or two uh, level 14s. Let's see. What is this? Yeah. All right. Good luck, man. So I'm going to start Prince in the back. He has a Goblin Cage to start things out on his side of the arena. Going to go with a Inferno Dragon. He drops the WoW. What's up, my brother? Let's give him the good luck. The go Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Well, this is going to be interesting here. I'm going to drop a Witch as well. Need to be very careful here in the right-hand lane. I'm hoping we kill a lot. Uh, okay, so he is fully charged up here, guys. Let's get something going. Should we do this or should we do that? I'm going to activate and not use Graveyard. All right. This is going to be a lot of Larrys, man. Bar Barrel comes down. Okay, I don't want to be too aggressive. We scored a lot of damage there. I'm happy with it. We have the damage lead. I'm just going to go ahead and... I guess I'm just going to Skarmy there. He'll still have to respond to it. Hate to waste the Skarmy on an Ice Wizard, but I didn't have an obvious uh, play anyway. I'm just going to start with a uh, Skeleton King in the back. He might press for a Graveyard push. If he does, I'm going to Dark Prince in the pocket. So he doesn't go for it. I'm just going to Dark Prince right over here. See what he decides to do. I'm actually going to go in with a Graveyard here. He already used his Knight. I'm going to use the ability as well. He has Bar Barrel in hand. He uses a poison. I'm going to take a lot of damage. He forces a NATO out of his hand as well. And he got fully charged up there. That's, again, that's the nice thing about this combo, too, with the graveyard, right, is we can fully charge up. And keep in mind, my, my Skeleton King is only, is he level 11, level 12? He's only level 12. But I have to say, I'm just going to kind of play things a little tepidly here. I have to say, having all those Larrys die from the graveyard is kind of cool, right? So he's definitely going to push here in the right. I'm going to be ready for it. I'm going to go Skeleton King. Put some pressure on him. Going to fireball this. I'm not going to use the ability because he could graveyard me in the right. And that would hurt a lot. I'd rather be a little bit more uh, cautious here, right? Because all it takes is one bar barrel graveyard push, right? And I'm kind of, I'm toast. So we're going to go with the wizard in the, in the right-hand lane to take care of the goblin brawler. Going to go with this dude and this dude. And again, we're going to get so... We're going to get him charged up so quickly. I'm going to DP as well. And... We're just going to go ahead. He uses his bar barrel. I think that's going to be GG's right there. Let's go ahead and activate. Boom. There we go. Let's just fireball and end this one. Man, what a fun deck to play. Definitely cool having all of those skeletons die from the graveyard, from the Skarmy, from the witch, and just charging up that Skeleton King almost immediately. It, it happens really fast. We'll give him the good game, the good luck. By the way, a little uh, solid smoke coming on the channel tomorrow. A little sneak peek of that deck. Boom, right here with the uh, the Golden Knight. This is the best Golden Knight deck that I have found, the Sparky one. But I want to go against a deck that has a really, really good matchup against us, right? That is, uh, that's not bad there. Ooh, let's watch it against 2.6. Let's watch it against 2.6 before we let you guys go, okay? 
So again, watching from the vantage point of the opponent here, they go in with a Hog Rider. We respond with a Skarmy. Uh, single Elixir, we're going to have to be passive against a deck like this, right? We go with a Skeleton uh, King in the back. And then again, we go with the, uh, the go with the Witch, right? He's already charged up. Look at how much he's already charged up. Here comes that graveyard down. Log comes down. A million skeletons down. So this guy has... Uh, this guy has... Uh, excuse me. Not, not the best matchup. Not the worst matchup either, right? So here we go. Hog Rider comes down. Who's your favorite of the heroes? Who did you... Anybody level 12? Or level 14, excuse me? If so, who did you unlock? Did you unlock more than one champion? I bought the offers. First time I spent money in this game in a long time. Probably two or three years. Aside from Royale Pass, which I do buy every month. By the way, big shout out and thank you to anybody who used my creator code CWA. I rarely advertise it here on the channel, as you guys know. But I do appreciate you guys who do uh, support me. And if you don't support me, there's a million great content creators out there. I had Rich Slayton on the channel yesterday. I had Morton on the channel before that. A uh, big fan of Cashman. Man, uh, there's uh, Diddy out there. There's so many great creators, right? I mean, could be here all day naming them. Who's one of your favorite creators uh, in Clash Royale? Give a shout out in the comments below. Whose code did you use? Clash with Shane, my boy, uh, one of my best uh, friends in the scene, you know. And uh, of course, B Rad is like the master of Clash Royale content out there right now. Tag. There's so many, so many great players. I feel like if I start naming them, I'm gonna have to name everybody, right? Legendary Ray, my boy, Night Owl. May. All right, here we go, guys. We have, not to mention all the other different language creators we have. There's still so many great uh, Clash Royale content creators out there. It's great to see, right? Six years into the game. Six years into the game. Still so many awesome creators out there. And there's more creators every day, every year, every month kind of uh, coming out of the, of the woodwork, right? Kind of starting out their channels. By the way, if anybody out there is looking to start a Clash Royale YouTube channel, Tweet me at CWA, and if I don't respond, it means I haven't seen your tweet. But I'd love to give my viewers a shout-out. I want to see you consistent, though, before I give you a shout-out. I want to see you put out, like, you know, a month worth of videos. Because I don't want to be giving shout-outs to just anybody who quits the next day, right? Uh, but let me know. Anyway, here we go, guys. Going to be a Skeleton King. We're going to kite the Skeleton King, or Impa Nico. The opponent's going to kite. But we lock on with the Inferno Dragon, man. This deck is deadly, dude. Deadly deck. Very fun. Skeleton King in action. There we go, guys. So hopefully, similar to me, you're now a believer in the Skeleton King. Give this deck a try. Super, super fun to play. Thank you so much for watching all the way till the end. Check out my man, again, Samuel's player stats and profile. Thanks to StatsRoyale.com. And, of course, check out his Twitter information. All that will be linked for you guys in the show notes below. Big shout out to GFuel. We have a 30% code bump right now, guys. 30% off your entire order when you use code ASH. The link is in the description below. Big shout out to GFuel for being being such an amazing partner here on the channel and a big shout out to Bren Chong as well. Guys, thank you so much for watching and as always, take care guys.